passionate and resilient scenes in the FGC has to be the NRS community. And to give us insight on that community is longtime community member and Mortal Kombat content creator, Aaron Caboose Coase. Thanks for joining us, Caboose. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Before we dive deeper into the scene, can you give our viewers a little bit of insight of how you got into the NRS community? Uh, yeah, so I guess my I guess my first first introduction was through Injustice Gods Among Us, the first Injustice game from Netherrealm. That was kind of one of the original superhero games that I was covering on my channel in my comeuppance. Mm -hmm. But I'd say my like real introduction into the FGC, into the NRS scene was with Injustice 2. That's where my channel found a lot of success and that's where um, I had started to at least get a little bit better. I wouldn't say I got good but I got a little bit better at fighting games and I started to get more of an understanding of fighting games for Injustice 2 and that was sort of my real introduction to the scene. That's awesome. Okay, so, you know, I think we could agree that in the FGC, the NRS games stand out from other games because of its North American roots compared to some of the Japanese titans that are, you know, Capcom's Street right. Fighter. So what do you think it is that makes that, that the NRS appeals more to uh, the FGC than other games? Or do you think it's an actual, like that difference actually hurts the scene? Uh, I don't I don't think it necessarily hurts the scene. Everyone everyone wants to say, oh, the game's dead, the game's dead. It's like, <laughs> no, we were pulling 30,000 concurrent on Final Combat. So the game is far from that. Um, but I think what the big draw is, you know, as you're mentioning that these games have a bit of a bigger audience in North America is that there's actually quite a bit of a big casual audience. You know, with Injustice, it's superheroes. Who doesn't love that? With Mortal Kombat, it's such a familiar franchise to gaming in general. So who doesn't know about Scorpion? Who doesn't know about Sub-Zero? So I think that there's a big draw there for a casual audience and you have a lot of players who just jump on and play the game casually rather than, you know, games like Street Fighter or Tekken that kind of live and die off of the esports scene, which is a great thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing in any way, but with Netherrealm, with, with Mortal Kombat, with Injustice, there's just more of an audience there that doesn't necessarily tune in to some of the tournaments, whereas with Street Fighter and Tekken, that's kind of the primary audience that plays that game or that's those games. That's fair to say. Um, you know, despite what game you're playing, I think it's safe to say that the FGC as a whole looks to one of the biggest annual events of every year, uh, EVO. Mm -hmm. Um, last year, Mortal Kombat 11 marked the return of Mortal Kombat at EVO, and EVO yep. 2019 was also the largest MK tournament in history. But mm -hmm. despite that, tournament organizers announced that MK11 will not make a return this year at EVO 2020. How did you feel about that decision? It's, it's a bummer. There's no doubting that that is um, a huge missed opportunity. Mortal Kombat, has, or in most every Netherrealm game, has always had at least two years at EVO. Mm -hmm. And I get it, there, there are some really cool games that are going to be at EVO. That Marvel vs. Capcom 2 tournament sounds awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. But uh, I, I don't really know what to say other than I'm extremely bummed. We had such a huge attendance of people signing up last year for MK11 that it seemed almost like a no-brainer especially now having Spawn coming out, we'll have all six DLC characters available and in play. You know, it could it could have been a really hype tournament, I think. There could have been some really exciting moments, especially if you look at Final Combat and all the crazy competition that was available there. Yeah. There would have been some hype with MK11 at EVO. So I think, I think it's a huge missed opportunity. I'm not entirely sure who to point my finger to, whether it's the event organizers or whether it's maybe WB who was like, okay, we don't need this kind of thing. I don't really know. Um, but regardless, if, if it was WB saying no, missed opportunity on their part. If it was Evo saying no, missed opportunity on their part. Definitely. And you mentioned that Final Combat was, you know, a show of a lifetime. And that's something that mm -hmm. fans were looking forward to. But, um, you know, unfortunately, just days before... We were looking <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> just days before the event was supposed to happen, it was canceled due to concerns over the COVID-19 virus. Um, where were you when you heard the news and what were your initial thoughts? Oh, man, that's pretty crazy. I was actually on my flight, mm -hmm. uh, sitting in my seat. I was on my flight with uh, Honeybee and Biohazard, who are competitors. They were actually going to be competing in LCQ, the last chance qualifier uh, for Final Combat. And I'm looking at my, pl or looking at my phone 
because the plane was like de-icing. So we had we had a couple minutes before we were going to take off. So I was like, all right, let me just take it off airplane mode for a second and just check Twitter. And I see someone in my mentions who at me and is like, oh, no. And I'm like, oh, no, what? And then I see Netherrealm's announcement and I tap Biohazard on the shoulder because he was right next to me. And um, we found out. And I mean, it's OK. From one perspective, I get it. I get that the virus is a concern and that they need to be worrying about people's safety. But it also is really disappointing that we couldn't yeah. attend. You know, it, it was such a hype finals. There were so many great sets that the place would have been going crazy. We would have blown the roof off that venue mm -hmm. if they would have had a live audience. So that for me is the most disappointing part. Obviously, not being able to experience the spawn trailer with the crowd is also a really disappointing part yeah. of missing out on Final Combat because being at the reveal event last year when they revealed Mortal Kombat 11, it was like a rock concert. And I was expecting just the same for this event. But again, it is what it is. I understand that they have to take precaution. I just wish that they probably that they could have let us know a little earlier. Yeah, I know. You know it would it would have stung a little less. Yeah, definitely. You touched on a great point. You were with Honeybee and Bio, and I know Bio was really disappointed. He voiced that on Twitter. Um, in yeah. your opinion, how do you feel the that was handled in? like specifically to the LCQ where um, players were able to actually qualify for a spot for that grand pop prize. Do you think there was a better way to do it? Because Mortal Kombat does have a great online um, feature, mm -hmm. right? Like one of the best in the FGC. Do you think that there was a missed opportunity there by NetherRealm? Um, honestly, I, I, it's so hard to think if there was any other option. I mean, immediately what I thought too was like, okay, well, why don't they just do it online. I mean, that's what we did with Northern Arena. So like we could have we could have had something there potentially, but I guess it just it would have been too hard to organize in that little amount of time. So I, I don't know. Honestly, I just think it's a huge bummer. I feel way worse for the people who are missing out on LCQ than the people who couldn't make it out to Final Combat because they were there, they were here in Chicago for the opportunity to compete in Final Combat, for an opportunity to get a piece of a $100,000 prize pool, and they're just told no. Like, they're just told, hey, sorry, tough luck, you cannot compete, we cannot let you because of the circumstances. And that's why, you know, I, I ha I'd have to imagine that this whole concern was in either WB or Netherrealm's mind mm -hmm. for much longer than the day of them announcing it. So yeah. I feel if they were 50-50 on it a week ago... A decision should have been made earlier. It, it should have been made yeah. earlier. Whether yeah. Either you're going to say, okay, screw it, we're going to go with this, or a week ago you got to be like, okay, we have to pull the plug because there is some concern here. Yeah, so, no, I completely agree I, with you. So late. It was so late. It was so late, and I think because of their recent hurdles, you know, with Evo not MK11 not making an appearance at Evo, and now yep. this, what do you think Netherrealm has to do to regain the confidence of the community? That's a tough question. Um, I think we just got to hope that things go well in the world regarding this virus, because with Final Combat, Netherrealm did show that they can they can pull off a hell of a show without having to worry about event organizers doing it for them, you know? And I'm not saying that they should run a potential season two of the pro competition on their own. Definitely have the have like Combo Breaker and CEO and all these different tournaments have that support there being provided to them because those tournaments are very important to the FGC. But we don't necessarily need a massive event like Evo to still put on a really good show. Yeah. So, so long as things go well in the world, uh, I think Netherrealm will be okay if they want to, if they want to organize a couple of big tournaments just themselves. I agree. Um, you know, we have to talk about the big reveal spawn that yes. happened at Final Combat. You mentioned it a little <laughs> bit earlier, but what were your initial impressions of the whole reveal and of spawn as a playable char a character now? I think he looks amazing. I have been asking for Spawn since the first Injustice game. I'm a huge fan of the character. I'm a huge fan of Todd McFarlane and everyone in the Netherrealm community. We have been teased endlessly. Ed Boon has been messing with us on Twitter for years. 
with this character. So yeah, to he finally likes to do that. <laughs> not know that he's in the game, but to finally see him in action, I was really excited. He looks amazing. Keith David as the voice is incredible. And his gameplay just looks, he's, he's awesome. He's really awesome. <laughs> I think he actually may have the grossest final, like his, his fatality is just insane. Devorah's bug fatality is still worse. Uh, okay, well, we could talk more about it all the time, Caboose, um, but unfortunately, we're out of time. So thank you so much for joining us. We always appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.